أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا سرات المستقيم سرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وإذ يرفع إبراهيم القواعد من البيت وإسماعيل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم May Allah bless us all the verse that I recited has been taken from the second chapter of the Holy Quran. And the verse is 128. What Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful, and the Almighty says in this verse is, And remember the time when Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundations of the house. And remember the time when Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundation of the house, praying, Our Lord, accept this from us, for thou art the all-hearing and the all-knowing. Your Worship, the Mayor, revered Amir Sahib of the Canada Jamaat and members of his entourage, respected representatives of the community in the U.S., revered minister of a Christian religion, Distinguished, invited guests, my sisters and brothers in Islam. I greet you all with the Islamic salutation of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah be upon us all. When we say Assalamu Alaikum, the response is Wa Alaikum Salam. Which means, may the greeting that you have conveyed to us be returned to you in multiples. And as I came to Jamaica, I've come to know that the response to Assalamu Alaikum is welcome Salam. <laughs> A novel way of responding to Assalamu Alaikum, which I'm going to carry back home to Ghana. I arrived in Jamaica, and I must say, for the first time, I have not had the honor and privilege of being here earlier than this time. But I can tell you that I've already fallen in love with Jamaica. When I met His Worship at his office, he was asking me some of the things that I find common here with Ghana, 
And I told him that the first thing is the coconut. It's fresh, unadulterated water from the Almighty Himself. You drink it for energy. And I remember that there was a time when the black stars would carry coconut juice from Ghana to wherever they played football. And that is why the black stars were that successful. I am impressed with the mosque that has been constructed. I'm impressed by the time frame in which it was constructed. I'm impressed with the number of people, young and old, men and women, who have made appreciable contribution to the construction of this edifice. But I'm even more impressed with the turnout at this function. I know that quite a number of you do not belong to our community. But the fact that on this day, Sunday, which is very precious to you, you have made time to come to join us to celebrate this achievement which has taken place only to commemorate the name of Allah is a clear evidence of the nobility of the character of the people of Jamaica. And I'm grateful to the Almighty for it. I'm grateful to you all for being here with us. Only yesterday, we went to see the Blue Lagoon. And during our journey to Blue Lagoon, I saw the greenery, the beautiful flowers, the mountains, the hills, the clear ocean, and the lakes in this country. And I said, Oh Allah, what else have you not bestowed upon this country? It is my sincere prayer to the Almighty that he may out of his grace grant you more and more. Then as we come to this function, I see my compatriots, the Kente tells it all, who have come from Ghana to live among you. They may be serving as doctors and in different capacities. But the fact that you have accepted them and the fact that you accord them hospitality and the fact that you cooperate with them to render the service that they need to render to this country is another evidence of the nobility of your character. It is not in every country that foreigners are welcomed. So today, as we gather here for the celebration of the completion of this house of God, we can also pay tribute to our brethren in Jamaica. Somebody asked me, I believe it must have been at the office of His Worship, the Mayor, about what I have known about Jamaica. And I told him that one thing that I'm sure about is the 
revered spouse, the wife of Bob Marley, lives with us in Ghana. Your Worship, revered Amir Saab of Canada, my friends, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. A Kenyan went to Northern Ireland. And when he got to the airport, he was to be taken to his hotel. He boarded a taxi. And as he sat in the taxi, the taxi driver looked him in the eyes and asked him, my good friend, are you a Catholic or a Protestant? The Ghanaian was aware of the conflict between the Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland. So he turned this question up in his mind and he said, look, if I say I'm a Protestant and the driver happens to be a Catholic, I'm in trouble. And if I say I'm a Catholic and the driver happens to be a Protestant, once again I'm going to be in trouble. So he said, my good friend, I come from Ghana. There, there is a very big tree and all of us worship underneath. <laughs> the fact that this gentleman, the taxi driver, could believe that a country with a population of 24 million will all gather around a tree and worship. And yet he accepted it. And he sent my good friend to his hotel. The truth is, religion, all religions, come from the one and the only supreme being. And so all the messengers of Allah, all the prophets of God, are brethren. And so, if they are brethren, then they themselves would have lived peaceably with one another. So there is no justification for their followers to live in conflict. The truth is, if the founders of these religions were indeed brethren, then their followers also must consider themselves as brethren. The Holy Quran in this respect says, and he addresses the Holy Prophet of Islam وسلم, directly. Say ye, we believe in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what was revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and his children and what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to other prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and to him we submit ourselves. Holy Quran chapter 2 verse 137. Today we have gathered to inaugurate this mosque. Let's consider one thing. The clinker with which the cement was manufactured to build the mosque belongs to God. It is he who created it. The iron rods that were used in constructing the mosque also belong to God. He created the iron rods. 
The roofing sheets that were used also belong to God. It is He who created the substances that were finally turned out to become roofing sheets that have been used. Allah tells us, therefore, in al masajid lillah falatadu ma'alai ahada. And all places of worship belong to Allah. So call not anyone beside Allah. Holy Quran, chapter 72, verse 19. That tells us that once a mosque is built, it belongs to Allah. It doesn't belong to any individual. It doesn't belong to any group of people. It doesn't belong to any one community. It belongs to all of us. And so everybody has the right to worship in the mosque. The history of Islam bears testimony to the fact that the Prophet of Islam, on whom be peace and blessings of Allah, had invited Christians, a Christian delegation from Nigeria, into his mosque so that they could engage in religious discussion. It's not coercion, it's religious discussion, intellectual discussion. In the course of the discussion, the Christians asked the Holy Prophet to allow them to go out to pray. The response of the Prophet was, this is also a house of God. You can pray here. Can any Muslim living today in any part of the world claim that his mosque is more sacred, more holy than that of the Holy Prophet of Islam Yet, the Prophet of Islam had invited people who are not Muslims to worship in his own mosque. And the Christians obliged. What a demonstration of universal brotherhood. What a demonstration of the dignity of man. And what a demonstration of all the religious communities coming together to worship in peace and in love. Inside the mosque, there is no distinction of color, race, or status. The Holy Quran says, and among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the diversity of your tongues and colors. In that, surely, are signs for those who possess knowledge. Holy Quran, chapter 30, verse 23. It doesn't happen that in a mosque, a special place is reserved for people because of their race, because of their color, or because of their status in life. The only prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa required us that every worshipper's shoulder should touch the other person's shoulder. This is to ensure harmony, love, and affection between God's children. In the mosque, we have an imam, the leader, who leads the congregation in prayer. He steps forward and all the members of the congregation stand behind him. The lines must be straight. The prophet of Islam had said, 
If the lines are not straight, your heart will be crooked. So that tells us what discipline is. We must have straight lines and behind an imam. When the imam stands up, everybody stands up with him. When he bows, everybody bows with him. When he goes into prostration, everybody goes into prostration with him. That is a lesson in leadership. To understand that there is a need for leadership and there is a need for everybody to cooperate with the leader to make a success of the task that has been entrusted to him. A mosque symbolizes the power of Allah to listen to prayers. It's recorded in the traditions that the Holy Prophet of Islam went to the mosque one Friday. And a companion rose up and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, there has been drought for a very long time, no rain. And so our cattle are dying. Our crops are withering away, and we, humans, are also in great distress due to lack of rain. So pray that Allah may out of his grace grant us rain. It's recorded that the prophet raised up his hands and prayed, and immediately after that, the clouds began to gather. And then it started raining. It rained for two weeks without stop. So the other Friday, when the Prophet of Allah went to the mosque, this time the companion who rose up said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, our farms are submerged underwater. Our cattle are drowning. We humans are in great distress. So pray that the rain may stop. The Prophet of Islam said one prayer, Allahumma hawalayna wala alayna. Oh Allah, let the rain fall elsewhere and not directly over us. And the rain stopped. The point that is being made is, when people were in distress because of lack of rain, it was through prayer that the rains started falling. But then excessive rain can also cause distress. Ask those who have seen tsunami and ask also those who live in countries where it doesn't rain for a long period of time. Both ways, it is only through prayer because it is Allah, He who created the heavens and the earth. It is He who controls the powers of the heavens and the earth. If He says, be, it will be. And so, a mosque symbolizes the power of Allah to listen to our prayers. And that is why in the Muslim prayer, when we go into prostration, we are demonstrating to ourselves and to Allah that we are nothing before Him. It is He who controls everything. We on our own have no power. So now we have humbled ourselves before you. And we are begging of you to accept our prayer. In that posture, 
We have some prayers that are taught us by the Almighty in the Hudu Quran and by the Prophet in the traditions. But here, when you humble yourself to that level, you can say any prayer that you wish in any language and in any expression that you will find suitable and appropriate. So, it tells us that the mosque is also a symbol of the power of God to listen to our prayers. The mosque tells us, as we have already been told, that even today, Allah listens to prayers of his humble servants. Even today, Allah speaks to his humble servants as his book in the past. This is so because no attribute of God can be held in abeyance. If today we claim that though God spoke in the past, he cannot speak now, what it would mean is we will not have any assurance that if God saw in the past, God sees today as he did in the past. So we necessarily have to accept, if we believe in this supreme being, that all his attributes are all the time in operation. None can be held in abeyance. Those who go to the mosque have to wash their hands. They have to wash their mouth. They have to wash their nostrils. They have to wash their face. They have to wash their arms. And they have to wash their feet. Why do we do that? Of course, bodily cleansing. But at the same time, it is a spiritual cleansing. It tells us that as a Muslim, a believer who goes before his or her creator to ask him to accept his or her prayers, you need to ensure that you use your arms, the hands, the mouth, the face, the eyes, the legs, the feet, in a manner that is conducive to the teachings of the Almighty. You do not have any right to use any of these to harm the creatures of God. Not only humans, even non-humans. And so, we see that the mosque symbolizes everything good and noble. It is the mosque that symbolizes the unity of mankind. It is the mosque that symbolizes the mutual respect trust and cooperation which should exist between adherents of all religions, Christians, Muslims, Zoroastrians, and adherents of Judaism, Hinduism, Sikhism, and Taoism. Today, man is at the crossroads. A human being is cheering fellow human being apart because of false pride based on race, color, and ethnicity. The call of a mosque is loud and clear. The Arab is not superior to a non-Arab. That says the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, the non-Arab superior to the Arab. The black it's not superior to the white, nor the white superior to the black. All of you are from Adam, and Adam is from dust. The call of the mosque is loud and clear. We don't make any distinction between any of the prophets. In other words, we should show due reverence to all the messengers and prophets of Allah. The call of the mosque is loud and clear. 
And when my servants ask thee about me, say I am near. I listen to the prayer of the supplicant when he prays to me. So they should hearken to me and believe in me that they may follow the right way. Quran chapter 2 verse 187. The call of the mosque is loud and clear. O oh, mankind, we have created you from a male and a female, and we have made you into tribes and sub-tribes that you may recognize one another. Verily, the most honorable among you in the sight of Allah is he who is the most righteous among you. Surely, Allah is all-knowing, all aware. Let us imagine for a moment the people of the world today vying with one another in matters of righteousness. Everybody is trying to be more truthful than the other. Everybody is trying to be kinder than the other. Everybody is trying to love better than the other. Vying with one another in righteous deeds. Can you imagine how the world would be like? Paradise on earth is what we'll be building on this our earth. This has been quoted from Holy Quran chapter 49 verse 14. It is the training received in the mosque which transformed the divided people of Arabia into a united nation. It is the training received in the mosque that turned the idol worshippers of Arabia into ardent believers in the one and only God. It is the training received in the mosque that rid the idol worshippers of Arabia of superstition and made them foremost among the enlightened people of the world. It is the training received in the mosque that changed those who prided themselves on their ignorance into the teachers of the world. It is the training received in a mosque that elevated those who indulged in excessive use of alcohol and gambling into sober thinkers and torchbearers of civilization which ushered the world into the era of the renaissance of Europe. As it happened in the past, so can it happen today. Your Worship, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, man shares most of his instincts with the lesser creatures. What distinguishes man from the lesser creatures is his morality. And when we talk of morality, we are talking of the capacity of man, innate, created by the Almighty, to imitate the attributes of Allah, the capacity which is developed and enhanced in the mosque. Unfortunately, it is morality which is very much lacking in our world today. Today, man has come to believe that all that matters is the development of the body to the utter and exclusive neglect of the soul. Whereas the plain truth is, while the life of the body is limited, very, very limited, the soul is perpetual. One would therefore have expected that greater attention would be paid to the development of the soul as compared to that of the body. But that is not what we see in practice. It is apparent to all that man's morality has not kept pace with this scientific and technological advancement. It is this imbalance that religion has a duty to correct. And in this, the mosque has a pivotal role to play. Today, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, who claimed to be the long-awaited promised Messiah and Mahdi, calls on the whole of mankind to heed the behest of Allah as conveyed through the Holy Prophet of Islam on whom be peace and blessings of Allah 
And for that matter, all the other messengers and prophets of Allah who came before him, therein lies the solution to the problem facing mankind today. And therein lies the salvation of man today. Your worship, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my brothers, I bring you the affectionate greetings and prayers of the fifth successor of the promised Messiah and Mahdi, Hazrat Mirza Masrur Ahmed, who had graciously asked me to perform the inauguration of this magnificent edifice and dedicate it to the worship of Allah. He has significantly named this mosque Masjid Mahdi, which means Mahdi Mosque. Mahdi in Arabic means the guided one by Allah, who in turn would provide guidance to mankind. It is a sincere prayer to Allah that this mosque, which is an addition to the thousands of mosques of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in some 200 countries of the world, should play a noble role in fulfilling the aims and objectives and ideals of a mosque, as just mentioned, so that the inauguration of this mosque should send a strong message of peace throughout Jamaica. Uniting people of various ethnic groups and religious denominations and filling the entire country of Jamaica with love and affection and bringing about progress and prosperity in the entire land. Almighty Allah, we ask all this out of thy grace. Pray Accept our humble supplications from us, for thou art the all-hearing and the all-knowing God. Finally, I thank you all for accepting our invitation to join us on this blessed and auspicious occasion. I thank you also for your patience in listening to me. Thank you once again. May Allah bless us all. Thanks. Didn't that work?